Welcome folks to another episode of That's Anita Live, the talk show dedicated to providing emotional healing to help you create a happier life. This week we're talking how music soothes the soul. My guest is a well-known guitarist, Jim Thorne, and has two CDs with music that soothes the soul, particularly autistic children, but one of them is on the Grammy list. Uh, it's nice to just be considered whether anything comes of it or not. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, the, uh, the process involves a lot of review, and I've gotten some good feedback for that. You're full-time in science, correct? I was. Um, I studied astronautical engineering, so I have three degrees in it, a bachelor's from Purdue, master's and PhD from the Air Force Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. I'm a retired Air Force officer. And then I worked for a long time, full time for the government on space related issues. And now I still work for them, but only part time because I want more time to do music and, and a television show for kids to teach them about space. Now that, that that's an odd combination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so first, first, how did you get started in science? How did you know you wanted to be? Oh my, what a great question <laughs> that is. Wow. I am one of the group of people, my age group, mm -hmm. who are scientists and engineers who are known as the children of Apollo. Ah. Because we grew up when the Apollo missions were going on. I was a little boy. Next year will be the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, the moon landing first moon landing, and I remember it on a little black and white television uh, in my, my parents' living room. I was allowed to stay up to watch that, mm -hmm. and I was totally inspired. I didn't so much want to be an astronaut as I wanted to be the guy that built the rocket, so I just thought oh. that was really cool. Okay. And so I went to school to study that sort of thing. <laughs> and study that you did, because you didn't just get one degree in I, it. Now... Three, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Were three necessary to um, get employment in the field? Oh, no, I, I would say not to get employment in the field. Um, but what happened was I, I did well in school. And so I was offered the opportunity okay. to go full time on active duty to get a master's degree. And um, of my class in that particular area, I was the top graduate. And I had, uh, I had solved a very old problem in physics known as the Lambert problem having to do with orbital mechanics. And uh, to, to put that in layman's terms, it's determining where something's going to move over time through space. Wow. Okay. okay. And I figured that out, and they named it after me. There's a thing called Thorne's Solution of the Lambert Problem, seriously, in the uh, graduate physics oh, literature. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I did that, they gave me an award for uh, the research that I had done and invited me to continue on to do a PhD. And there I was on active duty, and mm. these people are offering me a chance to go to school full time. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's what I did. And so now I'm Dr. Jim, and my new show will be called Space Quest with Dr. Jim. Space Quest with Dr. Jim will kick off here on Channel 10 Fairfax, if you're watching it on TV. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> in probably February of 2019. That's the earliest I think that I would be able to start actually okay. recording the show. And I'm new to all this, so optimistically, yes, I think that's, that's about right. <laughs> and if you're not watching this on TV, but you're catching it on YouTube or one of the social media platforms, we'll get James, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll get Jim all hooked up on social media too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to, to get this out because the combination is really interesting to me because generally if you're interested in science then you're a scientist and that's where it starts and ends very rarely does a scientist cross over to become a musician <laughs> like we don't think of, of Billy Joel or as being a scientist we don't think of Guns N' Roses or the Beatles mm -hmm. as scientists mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't think of Lionel Richie as a scientist so how did music play into? <laughs> Another excellent question. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, I was a musician before I was a scientist. I really? started playing guitar in 1973. Okay. And, and I like to joke that by now I should be a lot better, you know, because it's <laughs> been a long time. I'm just kidding. But um, in 73, there was a wonderful singer-songwriter named Jim Croce who mm -hmm. passed away in an aircraft, small aircraft accident. Mm -hmm. And I was a, a young 
uh, kid in, in western Pennsylvania and I was going to the Y to take swimming lessons and on the jukebox they would play Jim Croce because he was originally from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I love the story songs and the humor. If you remember songs like Bad, Bad Leroy Brown mm -hmm. or Time in a Bottle, these beautiful Bad, Bad Leroy, Leroy Brown. Brown. Yeah. The baddest <laughs> man in a whole down. <laughs> yes, right. I remember. <laughs> yeah, by the way, that was the name of his drill sergeant in the Army National Guard. Oh. No kidding. He, he, he used names and you know, combined people like that. Um, but I'm very fortunate in that over the years I've gotten to know his widow, Ingrid, who ran a restaurant in San Diego for many years. And more recently, I got to meet his son, A.J. Croce, who was only about two when Jim died. But I'm telling this story because that's what got me started on the guitar. I had tried other instruments. I enjoyed them. I, st I still play a few other things. But the guitar and the, the singer-songwriter storyteller business was just so compelling to me. And of course, we also had people like John Denver mm -hmm. and James Taylor and yeah. so on. And so that's the, the style of guitar I picked up because it was a... It was a to be in, in, in resonance with the theme of your show, I found it to be a very m emotionally satisfying mm -hmm. thing to do, mm -hmm. especially during the stress of studying engineering. <laughs> 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 so there I was in the dorm <laughs> okay. writing songs and playing for myself. And um, at the time, I did not perform. So I was you, nervous. you kept the two intertwined all throughout your life. It wasn't, it's not something that you picked up no. say in retirement because you're interested <coughs> in finding something else to do. This has been a part of your life. Both of them really have been a part of your life since you were a minor child. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. However, in 2014, uh, because I never wrote any children's music, I, I, I had done folk music and stories as I was saying, okay. but also comedy and very family friendly comedy. Okay, I had posted some of that music online and no kidding, a talent agent from New York contacted me said that he did urban hip hop and street and all this mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. he said he heard one of my songs and it was completely different than anything he normally listened to but I actually got him with a song called They've Got Hogs in Indiana which is a joke on all the farms in, in the state where, okay. where I went to school uh -huh. and he said um, most people can't do or don't choose not to do perhaps um, family friendly comedy so have you ever thought of writing for children and I said no I that never crossed my mind uh. so I wrote three songs and one of them was about space and a fourth grade teacher friend of mine in Alexandria asked me to come to her class to talk to the kids about space. I said, I have this new song I wrote. She says, oh, bring your guitar. The kids will love this. So I did that. The response was so big that I thought, ah, oh, this is what I should have been doing all along. So mm. I, I've written now two albums worth of songs where that first song that I wrote, which is called The Stars Go By, uh -huh. will be the theme song for my new show, Space Quest with Dr. Jim. And you get to hear it here <laughs> first <laughs> on That I Need Alive. So Would you like me to play yeah, it? Yes, take us into that song. Okay. This song is about two kids mm -hmm. named Tommy and Laura. Okay. And they're from the future. And in the future, if we believe the kids can go into space, yes. and I always ask the kids that when I visit schools, <laughs> then um, let's follow the adventures, okay? This song introduces them. Okay. All right. Once we went into space to be part of a race so that people could walk on the moon. Many years have gone by, but again we will fly and return to the sky sometime soon. Can a girl fly through space to a planet? Could she pilot her spaceship and land it? Could she fly through the sky as the stars go by and bring home a space pomegranate? Many robots have flown to the greatest unknown and explored all the worlds of our sun. They have learned many things and gone through Saturn's rings, but there's so much that they haven't done. Can a boy fly through space in a rocket? Could he learn how to steer and to dock it? Could he fly through the sky as the stars go by and keep 
meteors in his pocket. You could learn to fly as the stars go by And reach for the endless sky mm -hmm. When the sun starts to sigh Many atoms will fly To be caught by the earth and remain Glowing curtains of light Will extend out of sight Painting colors that fall like the rain can the kids of the earth reach the heavens? Could they have names like Tommy or Laura? <laughs> Could they fly through the sky as the stars go by And hold northern lights in fedoras? You could learn to fly as the stars go by And reach for the endless sky mm -hmm. There's a world that's nearby With a red colored sky And some others with ice all around Some are big balls of gas Where you'll never see grass Since they don't really have any ground can the kids of the earth reach the heavens? Could they answer the biggest of questions? Could they fly through the sky as the stars go by And reach for new worlds as they beckon? Could they fly through the sky as the stars go by And reach for new worlds as they beckon? And that is, that is the theme song for your new show. I'm going to do a shorter version of that, but yes, I'm going to take the beginning and the ending and kind of uh, mush them together, and, and so there won't be quite as much in the middle, so it's about a minute long, because that, that would be a little long for a theme song. But, okay. but yes, and that's right. And with that, we'll be right back after this. Slash ebook. And we're back with our local legend, <laughs> Mr. Jim Thorne. <laughs> Music creator, songwriter. Now, your music has been used. Excuse me. No problem. At the local, uh, the National Science Museum. The Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian Air and Space. Um, that's where I played for autistic children. Okay. Which actually was not something I ever expected to do, mm -hmm. but I guess I have a gentle voice, and they they like that. So they have a program called Morning mm -hmm. at the museum, which is prior to ten o'clock in the morning when they normally open. They have a low sensory uh, environment built there with lower lights and, and because the, the public is not in there at that time, there are right. fewer people. Mm -hmm. And so twice now I've played for the morning at the museum uh, and it, it's, it's a very heartwarming thing. Um, I, if I may, um, uh, one time I was there at the, the one at the mall in the DC, you mm -hmm. know, downtown area, mm -hmm. not the one in uh, Dulles, although I've done both. But I was there, and they spread out a, a, a play mat that looked like the surface of the moon. Oh. <laughs> and it's right by the place where you can touch a moon rock. They have a place in the museum okay. where you can do it. It's okay. You can go, you know, mm -hmm. looks like a little piece of obsidian. Anyway, they put this play mat down, and these children would come, and they would pretend to be astronauts digging on the moon. And they had nice. play moon rocks and little baskets. And there was this one uh, young lady was in a wheelchair that was not um, terribly responsive. As, as you know, on the autism spectrum, there's a range. Mm -hmm. Well, I started playing a song called To Follow Apollo about kids going to the moon and finding rocks. And um, <laughs> it, it just by coincidence, I had a song about that as these kids were doing that. So I played it, and she looked at me and smiled, the girl. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the parents were stunned. I mean, they they were not expecting any reaction. Mm -hmm. And so the mother took one of the toy prospector tools and put it into the girl's hand, and she started leaning out of her wheelchair to try to pick up a rock. And the father was ecstatic, and he was mm -hmm. taking video. Uh. And the mother was smiling but crying. And if I, 
emotionally I couldn't look at her <laughs> and make it through the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to look at Dad, and I, I, I got in by the wheelchair and played for her. But it, it's an, a, an amazing tribute to how powerful music can be. Mm -hmm. And even though mm -hmm. I wrote these songs to educate and to address specific standards of learning questions for the fourth grade planetary science here mm -hmm. in Virginia, mm -hmm. um, there are other ways that the songs are being used including another friend of mine who teaches English as a second language mm -hmm. and uses the songs for that purpose too. So it, yes, emotional healing and also uh, a feeling of acceptance or, or, or uh, success for these, these kids that are trying to learn English as well. Well, music makes a lot of things easier to us. As we were talking before we started taping, conjunction, junction, <laughs> I'm just a bill. I mean, it's how a lot of us yeah. learned yeah. the mm -hmm. process on Capitol Hill, it's how a lot of us I mean, I can remember getting up every Saturday morning with that plane and, and listening <laughs> yeah. to it. Me too, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that, and Sesame Street was right, very powerful in right. that way too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your music is doing the same thing. Now, your subject is science. Space science, yes. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the songs are based on a boy and a girl that are space voyagers. Yes. <laughs> and their names are? Tommy. And Laura. And Laura. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so do your songs actually connect together to play out a story? So oh, yeah. how does that work? Oh, uh, well, I, I wrote the songs uh, partly to address specific questions. There's, yes, there's the album. One of the things, for instance, the fourth graders have to know is the order of the planets, mm -hmm. but in both distance and in size. So you can see inside that front cover there, see that looks, those two lists? Those are the order uh -huh. of distance and size. So I wrote a song where Tommy and Laura race each other around the sun, but in the different orders to see who makes it back to the earth first. Oh. And I wrote it to sound like a Beach Boys drag racing song. And I hired <laughs> people to come into the studio and make it sound that way. It's so complicated, I won't try playing that one for <laughs> you live. But um, that, that's the first song. And then the second one called Mission to Europa. Mm -hmm. Europa is a moon of Jupiter, and it has an icy shell and they think that there's a deep saltwater ocean. Uh, for a brief time, I was a, an exchange scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, and I was working on trajectory designs to the planet Jupiter for the purpose of studying the moon Europa. So when I write these songs, it comes from uh, a technical understanding of what the space exploration would be, but at the same time, I wanted Tommy and Laura as these characters so that the kids listening to the song could put themselves Mm -hmm. into the action. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just lecturing them. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I find songs that, for, that are for children where the, the science is presented as if it were a lecture not to be so interesting even though I'm a scientist myself. It's much more so, I think, if a person can project themselves into the story. So that's why Tommy and Laura appear in all of the songs and do different things. In one case, they save the Earth from an asteroid. In another case, they go to the planet Mercury. Ah, the space rock. The space rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't let this happen to you, like the dinosaurs, you know. They, they, anyway. <laughs> and they also go back to the planet Mercury. They, um, uh, they go back in time to learn the history of space to take pictures of the early space flight. The reason I wrote that song is a teacher friend of mine wanted astronaut names in a song. So I had, had to think about that, and I decided, okay, Tommy and Laura make a special ship where they can go mm -hmm. back in time and take pictures from a distance of the early space flights. So that's, I hope that answers your question on how it all yes. works. It, it's like um, a, stories, a series of science fiction stories. A race in space where Tommy and Laura race to the planets in different orders to see who gets back to Earth first. Right, yes, and that teaches the order. Mm -hmm. And that teaches the order of the planet by distance because in your because well, inside yeah. you have them listed in, in two columns right. one is <laughs> by the distance from the sun and the other is from smallest to largest that's right and in the song there are two separate verses where Tommy does it one way and Laura does it the other oh. so when you learn those words then you get the order and, and that was a little tricky writing all the planet names into there but I got a whole bunch of thank you notes from the the elementary students at Greenbrier Elementary in Fairfax <laughs> saying, Dr. Thorne, thank you. I passed my test because of your mm -hmm. song. And that just warms my heart. It I does. mean, yeah, that's I can, exactly what I was hoping for. I can for. only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, Mission to Europa, the history of space. 
That's the one where they go back in time and see that Yuri ah. Gagarin was the first one to orbit Earth, and then Alan Shepard and, and John Glenn and so on. How green is the world? That one I wrote for a friend who does um, ecology uh, teaching for the kids. So I wanted to teach them that we use satellites to look at the whole Earth at the same time. You have to get out in space to see the whole polar ice cap. Mm -hmm. If you're in an airplane, you're too close to it, you have to get out. Mm -hmm. So if we want to see how big the ice cap is, or how big the jungles are, mm -hmm. or how much algae there is in the sea, which is an indication of temperature, the whole world ecology is very much based on Earth observation satellites run by NASA and, and European Space Agency. So that's what I wanted to teach them, is that space is an important part of Earth ecology. Stars are red, stars are blue. Now that one my wife asked me to write. <laughs> <laughs> and she, Tommy and Laura have the very same birthday. They do, but she's, well, he's from Mars and she's from Venus because as you know, ah, men are from Mars. I'm right, but, um, <laughs> right, right. I, but I decided, yes, they coincidentally have the same birthday, but they go meet on Earth with their families to have a, a giant birthday party and they use their ships to write happy birthday to each other by connecting the stars in the sky. And what... Uh, what my wife wanted was a song that was easy to <laughs> sing along with. So the chorus is just, stars are red, stars are blue, happy birthday just for you. Stars mm -hmm. are red, stars are blue, happy birthday just for you. So that's their space birthday party. <laughs> wow. And How, what age are the kids oh. that usually you play for the most? For the science part, I'm aiming at about third to fifth grade. That's about the right age when they get planetary science. However, when I've played at the Gen Gem and Java in the Tot Rock series that they do on Saturday mornings, mm -hmm. or I've played other public places, library or Smithsonian, I, I play for kids from that age down. I mean, some really little kids. Um, they like the sound of the songs, which again is the emotional appeal. And that's fine. I enjoy yes, that. Yes. Uh, but I really, when I was writing them, I, w I, I was aiming to, to address planetary science. But I'm happy that, that it works either You've way. You've got all the residual benefits. <laughs> Those kids at the Jam and Java, there were about 100 of them, and they were wow. screaming and running around and holding out their little hands, pretending that they were airplanes and rocket ships. A hundred kids. Oh, well, at least there were 100 people. A lot of them were kids. That included Ooh. parents, I guess. But, but still, it was a lot I, of kids. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but the sound level was extreme. <laughs> I can only imagine. They were having fun. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I cannot imagine being in the midst of that many children. Yeah. They opened up a like a mosh pit in the front where they moved the chairs back and the kids were racing around. And later the staff told me, oh, they were enjoying it. I thought, great, great, that's... <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> yes. we are going to have Dr. Thornton take us out to one of the soon to be on the list, hopefully, yeah. Grammy nominated songs. Okay. All right. Um, actually, this song um, w is, is from my first album, mm -hmm. but the reason I want to do it is because um, of next year being the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. Mm -hmm. And this song is called To Follow Apollo. And my father really mm -hmm. liked this song. And unfortunately, <laughs> I just lost him a few weeks uh, ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to do To Follow Apollo because that will be the title of my first episodes of Space Quest with Dr. Jim. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Long ago we flew the lunar missions to explore. Since that one small step we haven't been there anymore. Robots fly out to the moon and circle round and round. But kids could land their spaceships there and walk upon the ground. To follow Apollo around the moon they flew to find some reminders of spaceships and their crew. Tommy did a survey of the landing sites of old. Laura found some clues by reading stories that were told. They began to make a plan to visit landing sites 
and see the famous places all before the lunar night. To follow Apollo around the moon they flew, to find some reminders of spaceships and their crew. Astronauts went to the moon and landed there six times. Every place was different, they found rocks of many kinds. There were three more missions planned but never got to fly. So now the kids could finish what Apollo dared to try. To follow Apollo around the moon they flew to find some reminders of spaceships and their crew. They came in peace for all mankind and made their mark for kids to find.